Hello everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is a preparatory ground instruction for lesson 22 on forced landings. Prior to this lesson, you should have reviewed uh, this exercise in your flight training manual. We're gonna talk about how to do forced landings or landings without engine power. This is obviously important uh, because unfortunately, there are mechanical failures in aircraft and you might find yourself having to land somewhere where you weren't planning to land. So there's a number of uh, reasons for engine failure. The most common reason is uh, too much air in the fuel tanks. Uh, too much air means, well, there's not enough fuel. So fuel exhaustion. So most of these uh, are completely preventable. Uh, so fuel exhaustion is one of them. Uh, carburetor ice is another one. And then of course we have our mechanical things. And so maybe I'll just uh, throw in a little story, something that happened to me. I've never run out of fuel, thankfully. Um, but to be honest with you, I uh, I almost ran out of fuel actually a little while ago on an airplane. I was relatively new. I had flown that type of airplane before. It was a Cessna 185. And, uh, but I had never flown that specific uh, 185 before. And I had to fly it somewhere. We were planning to pick up some gas. Uh, we landed there. There was no gas available. So we checked. We elected to fly back where we came from, where there was gas. And so I had done the, the calculations and uh, and calculated, okay, we're gonna land with about 45 minutes of fuel remaining. So it was day VFR, so the minimum was 30 minutes. And so, you know, we're gonna be fine, right? And uh, we fly all the way back and I just landed, everything was fine. And I took a look at the dipsticks and uh, the one dipstick had like was just barely wet and the other one was completely dry the other tank like how in the world like we literally came within a few minutes of running out of fuel like i'm talking like five minutes and it was a real eye opener and then i realized that airplane had a modification uh where it had slightly less fuel than most other uh or not slightly less about seven gallons less fuel than other um aircraft of the same type because uh, of that fuel tank modification but I wasn't, I didn't know that, uh, and I, I didn't, maybe I should have just been more, uh, looked at the, the books a bit more and just made sure about that because I, I just didn't think. I was like, oh, I know this airplane well, I can fly this long. And uh, I didn't know that uh, the owners had, had made that modification. So I almost ended up like in a really embarrassing and dangerous situation. So hopefully you can avoid the same mistake just by listening to, uh, to the mistakes that I've made. Let's talk about the procedure. Uh, on a forced approach. So there's uh, a number of steps. The first one, I'll just go through them quick and then I'll discuss them. So first, like anything is you fly the aircraft, then you're going to select the field, plan the approach, do a cause check or restart, whatever you want to call it, made a, brief, uh, made a call, passenger briefing and shutdown. So first off, flying the aircraft. It's the first thing you always do in an emergency. So you're flying along, boom, the engine has just failed. Trim for your best glide and put your carb heat on. The second thing you're going to do, select your field. So same as precautionary approach, use your cowls and you don't have much time. Uh, so hurry up, select your field. After that, you're gonna plan the approach. There's two ways of planning the approach. One is the T approach. The other one's the overhead 360. So I'm gonna talk now uh, briefly about the T approach. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick a final key point. So as you can see right here, uh, you're going to pick this key point right here. This is the final key point, you're gonna be 500 feet. And then you're going to make a T and you're going to pick a key point here and a key point here. And so you want to be, this is your base key point. You want to be 1000 feet above the ground here and make sure you're familiar with how, what the, what the uh, airport or sorry, the, the ground elevation is here. Alternatively, you could be a thousand feet here and then here you're 500 feet. And so what this allows you to do is you can do whatever you want, just fly to make sure you're over these key points at a thousand feet. Keep in mind that the altitude you lose from here to here will be about a thousand feet. So let's say you're 2000 feet right here. Well, what you can do is just turn, descend, come in and just make sure you're going in the right direction. Okay. If you're at 3000 feet, you could do like a figure eight or something like that. Okay. So uh, after that, you're, you're going to do a cause check. So basically a downwind check primer, master, mags, check your fuel, left, right tank, whatever. You're going to make a media call, so you should know how to do that by now. Brief your passengers. Um, and part of briefing the passengers, just make sure your cargo's secure, you can crack open your doors. And then the last thing you do is an engine shutdown. 
Uh, you're just going to shut the fuel off, the mixture idle cut off, and then after your flaps are down, shut your master off. And what that does is just prevents fire in case you flip over. So here's a video of this um, type of procedure. And uh, pay attention to kind of the cadence, how quickly they go through this and, and get everything uh, taken care of. Here's another way, uh, another procedure. So we talked about the plan, the approach, what you just saw, and you saw a T approach. Now, this is an overhead 360. So all you do is go to your runway and just circle and just make circle your way down, all the way down, and uh, come in and land. That's another way to do it. So I'll just show you a video. This is uh, another the overhead 360 type approach. This is a demonstration of a forced approach. The engine has failed. We fly the aircraft first by trimming for our best glide speed and pulling the carb heat out. We select our field and plan the approach. In this case, we're going to fly straight towards the field and be overhead the field at 1400 feet above the ground level and do an overhead 360. We once overhead the field, we start a rate one turn, preferably to the left to keep the field in sight. We'll descend at between six and 700 feet a minute. While we're in the turn, if we have not already done so, we're going to do a cause check, attempt to restart the engine, media call, passenger briefing, and once landing is assured, an engine shutdown to prevent a fire upon landing. Here we are about halfway through the right one turn. As you see, once the landing is assured, we can put our flaps down and land on our field. If we think we're going to be low, we can increase the angle of bank from a rate one turn to a medium turn. If we think we're going to be high, we can slip the turn a bit or add some flap. Landing is now assured. We can put our flaps down. So let's talk about the flight test. Uh, the forced approach is the number one failed item on a flight test. And the reason is not because people don't make the field, they fall short. Usually they're too high. So just be aware of that the plane glides a lot better. You know how to do this by the time your flight test. Don't freak yourself out. Don't crowd your field. Just hit your base key point at a thousand feet and you're just going to be fine. Okay. So there's an expectation that immediately uh, when the examiner says simulate engine failure, you're going to establish the best glide speed. You're going to be able to touch down in the first third of the landing area. Okay. And, uh, and then you're going to go through all your checks. Most importantly, if you do nothing else, uh, make the field. If you don't make the field, you'll get a one, you'll fail. But if you make the field and forget everything else, your procedure, well, it'll be a major error, it'll be a two, but at least you made the field. Okay, so you're expected to do these vital actions, what we just basically discussed. It says follow up with a placard or emergency checklist, uh, engine failure in flight. If you want to pull out a checklist, you can, but you know what? You're best off just doing what I just taught you how to do. Um, and focus on flying as opposed to looking for a checklist. Uh, make sure you make your uh, appropriate radio calls and your passenger briefing. So that concludes uh, forced landings, and uh, we'll see you in our next lesson.